Hi, this is Ryan from Better Tattooing. And today, let's give you a couple easy fixes for tattoos. Uh, when you make a mistake while you're doing it, might make it uh, save the day. Tattoo saves, I don't know, let's go. Okay, now that that's over with, Easy fixes for tattoos. Um, this can be really important for some people when they first start out because uh, when, you, when you start tattooing, you make a lot of mistakes. It just happens. Um, that's why you should be charging less than other people when you're first starting. Um, anyways, easy fixes. Some of, some of the most common mistakes that I see happen is, let's start with like number one, will be broken lines. <clears throat> and what do I mean by that? Okay, so, Broken lines could either be a section where maybe it picks up, it's solid and it goes through. There can be spots where maybe there's a bit of an over concentration that'll break off. Or there can just be spaces where maybe like the line is a little bit wobbly when we're doing our, our, our tattoo. And uh, some of the easiest ways to fix any type of issues with your lines is not to just go back over top of it, right? Because if we just go back over top of it, what's gonna happen is you're gonna have inconsistent amounts of pigment through it. Um, and if it is stuff like where there's a wave in the line or something, you're just gonna put so much pigment into that area that you're gonna oversaturate and it's gonna cause premature aging. So rather than that, you find your trouble spots, especially with broken lines, you come in and you'll stipple on it, whoop. A little stipple fill. One of the easiest ways you find your spots and you just dot in there. Now since there already is some trauma into this area, there's some more advanced techniques like a blow fill, which we don't even have to get into that, but um, all you're gonna do is just saturate enough so it looks like it's filled in the spaces that are there. And then as it heals out, usually what'll happen is this pigment will end up migrating and filling in that space, right? Pretty simple. Same with the uh, blown lines like this. You already know that this stuff is gonna start like coming out. All you're gonna do is same thing, stipple right next to the line that you're at. I mean, literally touching it to fill it in. And that way you can control the concentration of pigments that are coming into this. If you have a wavy line, one of the easiest ways is sculpt that sucker out. <laughs> make it make sense. Wavy lines, it's just maybe you need to just think about what you're doing and slow down and really focus on how your stretch is being applied. We've got videos about stretches and how to do it. Um, but usually like when this stuff is coming out, it's gonna happen because of one of two things, right? One, you've placed the stencil and you've stretched in a way that made the line look like this and you're like, oh no, I'm just gonna do it straight because it looks right and then you release and it gets all wobbly. <laughs> Um, or you're just in a bad position and you can't see what you're doing, right? So if I'm like leading away and my hand is literally covering what I'm doing, I can't tell what's going on. So unless you're very practiced, you're gonna end up maybe having a little bit of bibble bobble, something like that in it. So that's, that's a really easy way to fix those. Uh, stippling is just one of the best ways. And if you need to, you can contour lines. Number two, <clears throat> sorry, a little stuffy right now. Um, we got gap fills on edges. This is a very common thing, right? Where I see people, um, oh, there we go, nasal drip. When you're doing a fill, and then there's this just like open space where maybe you're using a mag and you're buttoned up towards the line and it doesn't meet. So what people try to do is they try to just take their stuff and then push these you know, groupings into the line to fill up that space. And what this actually does is lend up, you know, if we go to our skin model here, a little bit, I didn't get new markers. We do this. If you have pigment that's aggregated here and you're using a mag and you're trying to come up to it to place in there, you're usually undercutting that line to the deeper part of the tissue, which will create um, additional trauma so that in the future, <clears throat> as the tattoo ages, that pigment is gonna migrate away from that, that edge, making the lines look more occluded, right? So rather than just dumping up the amount of trauma, because you're, you're coming up to a space that's already been tattooed, right? You don't wanna just keep hammering more in there, trying to fill something. So you just, you know, switch up your grouping where that gap line is, and we'll just do this. And you just take a liner and just, if you do circles, that's fine. If you do ovals, that's fine. If you do 
scrubs, that's fine. It's an easy way to do it. Make sure that when you're doing the fill that you're chasing the line and not being lazy and having this point any other way. You want to just be directly in tune with the line. If you have a gap that's like this, you're going to chase that line one way or the other. If you have one that's like this, you're going to chase it one way or the other without your needle bending a whole bunch of other ways that it shouldn't be. <clears throat> That'll make sure that the pigment stays aggregated in the space. And even if you do have a small gap that's along the side here, the trauma is going to be relatively consistent with the other two sides that you've done, which means that as it ages, that pigment should spread out and fill it. And uh, depending on how much trauma you've imparted in the skin, that can happen as soon as, you know, a couple months out, which can be beneficial, but probably also means you oversaturated the area. Um, <clears throat> next one I see a lot in the shops is uh, color separating. Um, uh, whoop. Uh, and this is what happens in the cap, right? Before you actually use it. So a lot of people do these big, you know, sittings and they dispense all their ink so it's on display. And then what happens, you know, halfway through is all the pigment ends up aggregating at the bottom. So you're shallow dipping with your machine running <laughs> and you're just picking up this wash rather than actually getting enough of the pigment into the tube that you can do the tattoo effectively. So um, one easy fix for this is don't dispense until you need it, right? So you're gonna go through a lot more gloves that way. If you're somebody who is, maybe forgot to do their, their order <laughs> and you're like, oh no, I only have these gloves to finish this tattoo. You probably shouldn't start the tattoo anyways, but if you're just like, just about finished, you've got one more color left and you notice that's separated, you can fix it just by turning off your machine so it's not running deep dipping, giving it a mix, pull it out, turn it back on, let it run, flick it out, wipe with it off, dip back in again, and you should be good to have enough pigment that's in there. The deep dip, make sure your machine isn't running because you're gonna bottom out on the, that, that bottom of the end cap. <laughs> and then you have to change needles and change your gloves. If you only got one pair left, that's not good. Um, okay, so that one, color separating is really easy, just, yeah, just, don't dispense your stuff when you need it. Don't dispense it eight hours before. It's kind of gross. Uh, last one that we're going to do today is uh, like tying in blends. Tie in blends. Um, what I'll see sometimes is like, I mean, if you're trying to get something that's really clean looking so you can post it to Instagram, I notice a lot of people doing that pendulum shading stuff. And while it can be good, with specifically when you're trying to tie in blends, um, doing the entire tattoo like that usually is just going to traumatize the Jesus out of the skin. So we try to avoid it, right? But what I mean tiny and blend. So if you do butt colors, where you take one color and you literally butt it up to another color and you're trying to get that blend going, you can take a mid-tone between these two and literally just fan over top of it as you go. And that will help blend those two over top of it. Really simple, right? This also works really well if you have like a dark and a light if you're doing like black and gray shading and you have basically a line that's popped up because those two tones are meeting and you need to like blend it and make it a little bit smoother. If it's that dramatic, you go over to the light side and you go one third of the way past and you just back fan. I mean, very little over top of the dark because you don't want to keep adding pigment to it, right? You'll just make another line there and you're going to start brushing it more out towards the light. Now this will make the entire tonal setup a little bit darker but it will create a smoother transition so that it's easier to, you know, I guess on the eyes or to take a picture so it looks better online. That's it. Easy video for today. Hopefully you like it. Like, subscribe, buy a hat. I don't know. Let us know if you need to learn anything else in the comments. And uh, that's it for today. Ryan from Better Tattooing, signing off.